accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And he's got him. Got his man on the end route. Complete. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. To the air again. Golf. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Now a play fake here on first down. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. Back to the air, Goff on second down. And he's got room, and he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. It'll be a gain of four, and that's going to lead to a third down. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. And Coons connects on this one. It's good. And that will move the deficit from 20 down to 17. So a field goal here, they're still down, but they put a dent into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good, because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board, and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be, and that's in the lead. Following the field goal on is Riley Dixon to kick this one away. Fairly short kick, taking it to 14 here. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've reached halftime here on opening weekend. Hey, you. Yeah, you. John, why'd you skip Larry's halftime? I'm just kidding. I don't know who you are. But if you're John, I bet you're pretty freaked out for a second. All right, let's get to the third quarter. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's direct. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Holding offense. Here comes the Bears punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Hey, 
Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? And I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. See if they can get the ladder 50%. Here we go with second and seven. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Second down, here's Goff. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. A good pick up there, 22. Okay, when the big guy runs a corner route, you're asking a lot, no matter who's covering him. Doesn't matter whether it's a linebacker or a defensive back. He usually has the advantage because of his body type. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. here on first down to the sideline and oh a nice catch there made sure the feet were inbounds and they were all right say it with me now a lot of different words we come up with maybe we go back and forth after that play getting his toes tapped down to make that catch crafty yep wiley oh definitely all the veteran names you name it has every move in the book and continued to get better throughout his career so he can make that type of a catch Give it to him right up the gut. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Tough day. Tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Third and five, so they bring in an extra defensive back. An expecting pass. And he will find his man on the end round. Complete. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Play action. It's gone. Finding time. It's a short one here. Complete to his tight end. The completion good for three and it's second down. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. And when I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because the, you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. Goff now looking to throw. And he's got it. Got his man on the end round. Complete. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. No, I don't think so either. I think he had to read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he is going to lose yardage here. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. 
We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you've got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Carolina. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They're out in front last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. So holding by the offense and maybe now got to shift up what you want to do on the playbook. Yeah, definitely. Change what you're doing in the playbook, but boy, the advantage shifts to the guys on defense, doesn't it? Longer yard situations, they often become bolder. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. He digs them partway out of the hole that they're in. It's an eight-yard gain, and it makes it third and 12. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front, they moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. The offense staring at a third and 12 here. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Here comes the Bears punter now. He's been terrific so far. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Here are the Panthers now as their offense comes back out onto the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, there's, some, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. To throw on second down is gone. But he can't hang on. He had a good shot there for his third pick of the game. Instead, it's third down. Well, an incomplete pass certainly doesn't look like a good play, 
<laughs> for the guy throwing it today, as many interceptions he's thrown, he's got to feel a sigh of relief that the ball actually hit the ground and didn't go in the other direction. Watch 32, watch 32. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Off play action. Here's Goff. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. Here's Riley Dixon now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. Look at the spin. Balance. 43 yards on the punt. Seven-yard return. And the Bears take over. The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Wow, the big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had the fly, just sending the guy down. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. Eddie Goldman busting through to get him for a loss of six. Well, it was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. So it's third and long, and defensively, not a real surprise. They're in the dime. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Look at right sideline, that's complete. A very solid gain of 27. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh shot of downs. As if he didn't have enough to think about on that route, the comeback route, coming back to the football and catching it, decided to make sure he toe-tapped and kept himself in bounds. And that was spectacular, but on the comeback route, maybe a little easier to deal with the sideline since you, you've got better vision of it. I think that's a great point because you should know exactly where you're going and know how much space you have and make sure you get your feet down. But yeah, coming back to the football, I like it. Good vision. Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see it break down as the passer, I think in this situation, you're throwing it at the feet of your back to make sure no one picks it off, or you throw it away, throw it over the sideline. Don't try and freelance and try and make a bigger play. There's really no one else running a pattern that should be open. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Again, he'll drop to throw. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, 
Wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. You <laughs> got to keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that will push this lead up to 20 now. So three field goals for him here, and this last one helps him stretch out the lead. And he's been solid as usual. And this is what you need to do. Make sure you get points out of every possession. And so far, they've done a nice job of that. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Give this time to the tailback. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. We are through three quarters here on NFL Kickoff Weekend. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's the Panthers in possession of the football, but facing a deficit here as we get to the fourth and final quarter of play. Here's Goff now on second down. And he will find his man on the outside. It'll be a gain of 11. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. The coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Goff on third down. He's got time in the pocket. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Well, every now and then you just absolutely outguess yourself. Third and inches, and they decide not to run the ball. You end up seeing the end result. The end result was not good. They elect to pass, and it backfires. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're Let's up, go. but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, try to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Play clock winding down now a handoff here to his running back and they're able to get this one across the 35 they give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs well i'd say that runs pretty emblematic of what we've seen all day long no matter what they've done on offense this offensive line has controlled the line of scrimmage giving them time to throw it run it do whatever they wanted that's why there are points up on the board and right now the psyche of the offense we're in control, and we can do whatever we feel like doing out here on the field. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage and driven backwards. Nine yards still remaining here to pick up the first on second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now pressure comes in. He's brought down. It's a Panther sack. Eddie Goldman in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Now that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. That's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. 
Let's see. The defense might bring some added pressure as the offense is dealing with a third and long. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he's able to bat it away. This is brought in at the 21. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Panthers will get it here as they take possession. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before and realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Evans is alone to his right. Let's go! No, 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 no. Check. Patrick! Patrick! On second and ten. Go on. Now they go screen. It's complete. Only a yard there. Sniffed out well defensively, and it brings up third. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. Third down now following the completed pass. now out of the gun shreds the tackle just a yard on the run there and that's going to bring us to a fourth down they're already slim hopes are going to ride on this one they'll go on fourth down desperation time for golf on fourth and my goodness another interception a great read and it's picked off and they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. Right, here we go. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out. Give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. The reception good for seven. It's third down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Holding offense. Here comes the Bears punter now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Oftentimes when you're not winning at the point of attack for an offensive line, maybe they're getting out physical. 
spread things out a little bit, make it more of a one-on-one -on -one blocking scheme, then you don't have to win it physically. You just have to win it by position. That may open things up for your running backs. And he'll give it here to his running back. And that gets him a little room as he'll take this up over the 10-yard line. Eight yards there on the carry, and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three. But you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Well, they brought in an extra defensive back here, so probably not expecting a run on third and three. Good call. Goff now to throw. Quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Let's go! Off on first down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Looks like a pretty good, safe play right there. No, he's had trouble with the interceptions in this game there. Hits his guy out in the flat. Yeah, so many times we hear quarterbacks and offensive coordinators talk about, in your progressions, you're either throwing the touchdown or you're throwing the check down. But earlier in the game, it was touchdown or interception. Now he got to the check down. A nice safe throw and a good one. To throw on second down is gone. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want. Get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Again, gone. Jordan Reed has it. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. First and ten, golf. And he's got his man on the out route. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end, take some easier completions. Okay, interception last drive there. He hits the reliable target. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack, and it'll lead to a third and long. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep their, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing. The O-line coach will. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Third and long, it's gone. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Let's go! Detroit! Detroit! Desperation time for Goff on fourth. And he will find his man on the outside. He'll wind up getting 11 on that one. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. 
On first down, gone. Over the middle to Evans. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Now a first down throw, gone. They find some open field here. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Give him 16 on the pickup. And that leads to a Carolina first down. From the red zone now, gone. And he's got it. Touchdown, Panthers. Their big tight end. A 14-yard touchdown. And the Panthers are able to cut into this lead. And that touchdown puts us in a position to have a discussion, doesn't it? Now, it'll be a two-score game after the conversion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt with a two-score game, they're going to have to onside kick it. We'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve. And you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game. It's up. It's true as they get back in it a bit here. It's now 23 to 10. So that drive spans 13 plays, and Carolina scores to cap it off. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And the Bears' hands team able to pounce on it and get the football. Here's the Panthers' defense as they get set to go again. They were able to force the three and out last time, led to the punt, and then led to a touchdown for their crew. So they'll be looking for a little bit more of that, Charles. Well, I think that they created the spark with the three and out. Gave a little momentum to their offense. They said, all right, appreciate it, guys. And they took the ball downfield and stuck it in the end zone. And that defense wasn't out there long. They'll be trying... And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Here we go now. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. The Panthers are going to take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. And no, it doesn't get there. Hits the crossbar, bounces back out. He had it online, but it comes up about a rotation short. Uh, he had it online, gave it a pretty good ride, too, but in the end, he's a victim of the crossbar. And, Brandon, you know kickers very well. I bet if we ask him after the game, he'll say he didn't get all of it. We've seen him hit from deeper than this in warm-ups, but here, he's a foot or so from clearing that bar. Here's the Bears' defense as they head out to set up shop now. See if they can regroup a little bit. They gave up the touchdown last drive. And you know from our meetings with coaches all across the league, one of their pet peeves, when teams get down, a lot of these guys now, they, they want to treat it like it's a video game or something. Hit reset. Let's start over, coach. Out of the first two series, they don't even matter now. Let's, let's play again. That's not how it works. You're down. You gave up a touchdown. You can't do it again. You have to dig in, grit it out, and fight it out. Reset buttons. That is driving everybody crazy. There are no reset buttons when you're playing in this game. Preach, Chucky. Preach. A shotgun snap for Goff. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Give him six on the play, and that's going to make it second and 14. And they're going to speed things up here. And he clocks it with just over 30 seconds left.
And they'll add a DB in the secondary here on third and 14. From the gun on third down, Goff. He's got time. He's going to let it fly. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Offense. The penalty is declined. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Gotta try it here. He's back to throw. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And now they're in the hurry up. And he'll stop it with a spike here with seven seconds left on the clock. So second and ten here. To the air again, golf. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. And we're hitting the end of this one and it looks to probably be the final play. One last throw here for golf. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. And partner, this first week, this first game that we get to call together, so special every year, week one. You had the flyover, the big American flag out there before the game, all the hoopla, just having football back, so special. It is an opening day, opening game. There's just nothing like it because you really build to it.